It is before dawn on a Saturday at a church in suburban Toronto called Iglesia Ni Cristo, known as INC, and the faithful are already lining up. Preparations underway for a visit from their spiritual leader, Eduardo Manalo. Today, more than a thousand people will attend the service here, but not us. We're having a worship service. That's why we don't want you here. The church security detail is out in force. Hey, you're not supposed to take video of the brethren. And they don't take long to assert themselves against the CBC crew. Those spotlights they're carrying aren't to help out, but to blind our cameras. And the banners aren't only to welcome INC's leader, but also to keep us from getting a picture of him. You can't touch me, huh? Don't touch him. Don't be physical. We assume Eduardo Manalo is in the white SUV that arrives and then pulls into the back of the church. What's your leader hiding from? There's nothing to hide. But as we'll show you, there are questions both inside INC and out about how the church uses its members' money and whether it encourages violence. Behold, all those who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. Iglesia Ni Cristo means Church of Christ, and its followers claim it is the one true church. There seems little tolerance for anyone who thinks otherwise. Headquartered at this Gothic compound in the Philippines, INC has almost 7,000 congregations worldwide and millions of members. Here in Canada, there are more than 80 INC congregations, from Surrey to Scarborough, Burnaby, Regina, Winnipeg. Active in their communities with events like food drives or walks against poverty. What district are we from? Eastern Canada! But back in the Philippines, where it all began, there's controversy. For over a century, INC has been run by one family. Its leader today is the founder's grandson, Eduardo Manalo, and his is the final word. But increasingly, the church is facing unusual allegations for a major religious organization. Its members accused of financial irregularities, kidnapping, even murder. And the city of Vancouver now finds itself at ground zero in that. Because of this man, Lowell Menorca. Yeah, this is my everyday. Menorca spends his days collecting food for refugees and delivering it to food banks and homeless shelters. Hi. Hello. Just gonna leave this, okay? But thoughts of his home, the Philippines, right. and INC, are never far away. INC is the church in which you spent your life. Yes. I was born into the church. Uh, my father was a Catholic uh, who converted. As an INC minister, he says he led a happy life until church financial secrets appeared online and INC members blamed him for leaking them. <laughs> Menorca says police officers out to protect the church tried to kidnap him more than once, here in broad daylight on the streets of Manila. When it made the local news, INC denied any involvement. And Menorca says another abduction almost cost him his life. I saw 10 police officers with their guns yeah. pointed at me, and then they ran and shouted, the pop, meaning get on the ground. Yeah. He says he was sure he would be killed when he was put into a vehicle, handcuffed, and someone threw something inside. I immediately know that it's a grenade. <sighs> the only thing I could do was bow my head and pray for my wife and child. That's it. But incredibly, the grenade didn't explode. After that, he was held captive on church property for three months 
before escaping to tell his story. I was really afraid. Afraid for my family. The more we stay there, the more we will be in danger. And the Menorca family remained in fear of INC. When they found this picture on their windshield, their little girl's face crossed out in red ink, they fled the Philippines, his wife and daughter to hiding in Asia, Lowell Menorca to seek refuge in Canada. He found himself at Vancouver Airport, hoping he'd made the right choice. If you had stayed in the Philippines, would we be talking today? I, won't, I wouldn't be alive anymore. They really needed to silence me, to at least um, give the impression that, you know, this is what happens to anyone who would go against the church. Church members deny Menorca's story and claim he's defaming them to enhance his resident status in Canada. And they point to a series of criminal libel lawsuits launched by church members in the Philippines as proof he can't be trusted. So makatwid, pagka mayroong magsasabing iba sa sinasabi sa atin ng pumahala, dapat ba nating paniwalaan? Hindi po. Hindi po. The church has even made videos like this one from a chapel dedication in Regina, urging Canadian members to ignore critics like Lowell Menorca. So I don't even lend an ear to those people. I don't even listen to what they say. It's definitely the work of, you know, the enemy. But it seems the Canadian Immigration and Refugee Board takes a different view. In November 2017, they granted Lowell Menorca refugee protection in Canada finding him a credible witness who gave trustworthy evidence. They described INC as having the means and the motivation to seriously harm or kill Menorca if he were to return to the Philippines. I was uh, hoping that, you know, this is really what God wanted and, mm -hmm. you know, that I, I, I can give hope to others who are looking for protection too because a lot of them are still in danger up to this very moment. These days, Lowell Menorca is in communication 24-7 with INC members around the world who've made him their touchstone in the battle against the church. It's how he came into contact with this woman. Liz de Acampo was among the first in North America to organize protests against the church in California, home to the largest INC population outside the Philippines. We arranged to talk at the arena in downtown Sacramento, but no such luck. If you guys want to talk, uh, sure. you will come here, you know, just... I think the church uh, told security not to let CBC... INC has an event here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of their first U.S. church service. Apparently, we're not on that guest list either. Is it the church that is objecting to our, our being here? I don't know. So, <laughs> welcome to the world of Iglesia Ni Cristo. Uh, shall we uh, find another place to do this? I guess so. Finally, we find a spot to speak to Liz de Acampo about the recurring complaints against church leadership, allegations they're enriching themselves with their members' money. They have luxurious cars. They have bigger houses, lavish lifestyles. They're able to travel. Reportedly, part of that travel is in the comfort of an Airbus A330 jet, valued at over $200 million. And Eduardo Manalo is always surrounded by security. In 2016, in California, protesters were met with violence. They attacked us physically. Broke our signs. They shoved people on the fences. Pushed me. Pushed one of the ministers. Liz de Campo was expelled by INC and sued by the church. And she got this, a not so veiled threat from an INC member that she would be killed. Still, she says, it all was worth it. A lot more people are waking up to the truth. There are a lot more people noticing the differences between what's going on now and how it was before. It's a rift that has dogged Eduardo Manalo since he took over INC about a decade ago. And it raises a question. What do Canadians who attend or support the church really know about it? 
and what might happen should they speak out. We're off to Northern California to meet a man who found out the answer to that the hard way. My beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, we are truly happy and filled with joy because all of us who are supposed to be here are safe and sound or able to get... He was a prominent minister in Anaheim, California, when he broke with INC. What did the prophecy state? It says... From Today, Rolando Dizan preaches to others who've left both the church and the rule of Eduardo Manalo. People stop fearing the Lord. They feared a man here on earth instead. Not going to mention the name. When Manalo became leader, Dizan says he had a front row seat for the system that church members used for handling collection money. That they would collect. They would segregate some of the cash, a good amount of the cash, yeah. and they bundle that together. And there are collectors who show up on a particular day to pick up the bag of money, the bag of yeah. cash, and they transfer that all the way to the U.S. main office in Burlingame. Exactly what they do with the cash, we have no idea. We cannot ask about that. Just to be clear, in, in your capacity as a minister of INC, you saw this, as what you call, funneling of the money. Oh yes, I seen it with my own eyes. Yes. INC's lawyers say handling cash like that is not unusual. But according to Dizan, congregations in Canada and the US are INC's cash cows. He says it's why Manalo spends so much time in North America. In fact, sources tell us that they've submitted a list to U.S. law enforcement of church executives they suspect of trying to smuggle cash from Canada and the U.S. And indeed, we've received information that in 2015, one of Eduardo Manalo's top executives, a man named Matt Pareja, was detained at Seattle Airport, allegedly trying to take undisclosed cash out of the country. In other words, exactly what Rolando Dizan described for us. If you kind of connect the dots, you know, when you consider the fact that there are congregations preparing cash during his arrival. Through his lawyers, Eduardo Manalo denies misusing church money in any way. But Dizan doesn't buy that and fears he still may pay a price for speaking his mind. Do you believe you are in danger? I believe so, very much so. In fact, just before he left the church, he says he was recalled to INC headquarters. Then a contact in Manila told him to stay away. The informant told me, don't do it. Why? Because your life will be in danger if you do that. So you were being lured back so they could kill you? I believe so, I believe so. He's safe for now, but as you will see, that was not the case for a Canadian in the Philippines. When he crossed paths with INC members, Barry Gammon's life was about to end. This guy just quickly came in and just, um, just shoot him, just keep on shooting and shooting. So we think we found the door that Eduardo Manola will use to exit after his service. And our search for answers continues. He's got security guys around. Fingers crossed. The spires of Iglesia Ni Cristo reflect the lofty place INC holds in Philippine society. One of the largest religious organizations after Catholicism and Islam, it has a disproportionate influence in the halls of power here. INC gets much of its clout by voting as a block in Philippine elections. Now, church leader Eduardo Manalo is a confidant of strongman president Rodrigo Duterte. We'll do anything. Former minister Rolando Dizan saw the church's position of privilege from the inside. You say they can get away with anything they want to get away with in the Philippines. Yes. Specifically, why is that? because of their influence. They have a lot of influence over politicians. Not only that, the brethren there in the Philippines, they will do anything. They're like blind followers. All them here. You're an asshole. You're an asshole. Canadian Barry Gammon came into conflict with INC members in the Philippines when they began building a church nearby. It started when he complained about all the noise, but a police report would indicate the dispute went far beyond that. 
Gammon recorded this confrontation with an INC member on his cell phone. Originally from Montreal, after Barry Gammon met his wife Lucy, they had a son and built their dream home in the Philippine countryside. We, we really worked so hard together. We're together, we built it. We're proud that we built it ourselves. According to Lucy, it was an idyllic life until the INC chapel went up next door. When they're doing their construction, the in and out of the motorbikes and they're, and they're working like until midnight, that started the, the, the encounters between us. Those encounters dragged on for two years at all hours of the day and night. So three o'clock we're awake, our son is awake. <sighs> How are you gonna have peace in that? You're on my fucking property. <laughs> it all came to a head when Gammon argued with this INC member who'd parked in his driveway, blocking his gate. He's also a local lawyer. We're not done. I'm the senior in court. But there would be one final encounter with other INC members. They were really, really mad that time and said that we're not done. Did it ever cross your mind that this would turn to violence? Nothing, never. One evening this past June, Barry and his seven-year-old son JJ were on their front porch when suddenly there was a stranger with a gun. This guy came in and just shoot him, just keep on shooting and shooting. And then my, my husband dropped I saw him bleeding, when he dropped on the floor bleeding, I, then only I realized my son, my son is just on the... He, so he's been there for all of us. Yeah. She hustled JJ into the house, trying to hide him under the bed, but he wouldn't go. It's just really, it's heartbreaking, like he told me, we need to help daddy, so to stay here first, I'm gonna, no mommy, I'm gonna come with you, we die all together. His family survived but Barry Gammon would die from his gunshot wounds that night. It was just over a month later, August 2018, when Lucy and JJ reached Vancouver. BR-116 Manila. Met at the airport by Lowell Menorca. Hello, po. Where are you? You okay? Relief, pero... You're safe now. This is your son. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jesse. How are you? Okay. Oh my God. You're safe now. Okay. You're you're with mommy, and you're with some friends and family, so you have nothing to worry about. Okay. You're here in Canada. I know it's it's a lot to take in. In Canada, there has been no reported violence connected to the church. But since he arrived, Menorca has reason to believe he's been followed. Surveillance photos of his daily routine in Vancouver posted online. In one of its decisions, the Canadian Immigration and Refugee Board says it's clear that police in the Philippines are willing to protect INC, even going so far as to suggest a number of scenarios in which a critic of the church might be killed. From staged police encounters to death in custody, to contract murder in a country where hitmen are plentiful and cheap. Meanwhile, Lucy Gammon and her seven-year-old son are at a safe house in British Columbia, fearful of reprisals after her husband's killing. He just want to be in peace. And live this is her first and only interview decided. since the murder. Is there any doubt in your mind that what happened that night had to do with your fight with the church? I think he's as worried about you as you are about him. Oh yeah, he's, uh, he's, very, he's really strong. Is there any doubt to you that what happened, the death of your husband, was because of your dispute, your fight with yeah. Iglesia de Cristo, the it's church? Definitely, it's them. Yeah. It's about them. And back in the Philippines, authorities agree the fatal attack on Barry Gammon could have been triggered by his dispute with INC members. According to this police report obtained by the CBC, there is a long-standing spat between the couple and several churchgoers. 
there is a very good likelihood any of those whom the victim may have displeased greatly had him shot to death. And Gammon isn't alone. A number of former INC members have also been murdered or gone missing in the Philippines. A well-known church critic ambushed and shot to death in 2017. Another expelled member missing and believed murdered in 2017. A third shot through the eyes in 2018. And we have documented four examples of former INC members kidnapped or illegally detained. While we found no evidence INC leadership ordered or knew about any violence, time and time again, those who cross INC or its members seem to become targets themselves. Back in California, INC leader Eduardo Manala is about to hold another anniversary service. Close to 20,000 followers are expected at the Sacramento Arena. And on our way to the event, we appear to have picked up some followers of our own. There were two cars behind me. There was the black car and the Hummer. Two cars and several men have been tailing us all morning. They're right behind us right yeah. now. You can see them right through the door. Yeah, that's it. That's the car. Let's gear up. I'll, take, I'll put a mic on. Hi. Okay. Why, why are you following us? Well, I I was uh, just going to uh, make sure that you are uh, all right. He introduces himself as Don Orozco, a Philippine journalist from the U.S. I am not employed with INZ. I am here representing Philippine News. <laughs> really? Is that is that Philip what Star? is yeah. that is that what journalists do in the Philippines? They they try to stop fellow journalists elsewhere from doing their jobs on behalf no, no, of a no, church no. like uh, INC? Is I, that what you do? I, 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 as, as, I, as I stated earlier, I am here to guide you, not to stop you. Okay? You're here to Eventually, he admits he is also an INC member. Well, uh, people have told us, uh, people who say they were victims mm -hmm. have told us that mm -hmm. the church has been associated with kidnappings, murders, uh, systemic uh, corruption, the skimming from collections, put, uh, smuggling, you know, smuggling you money know, you know, in and out of the U.S. You know, uh, that that is not true. No, I, that's never happened. I, I completely deny that. You've been uh, seeing us in the bad light. Why haven't you seen the 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 the, the better light of the church? Because we've been speaking to people whose lives have been threatened by the church, or whose husbands have been killed. That's again a deep accusation. It That's is. Again a it is. Mrs. Mrs. Me. Mrs. Barry Gammon will make it to your face, mm -hmm. and she has told us in great detail what happened. Well, again, it's her word against our word. Yeah. But, and what does it say? So, so I I, I can well, further I, comment on that. At this point, we've already sent several emails asking to speak to the INC leader, and when we get to the arena, church security obviously knows we're coming. private property we need you back down on the street we head into the underground garage looking for where eduardo manalo might make his exit after the service hoping to ask him questions raised by our investigation you are not down here. again they're expecting us inside the inc leader and 17,000 faithful literally kissing his ring in the garage, the CBC crew kept away by a line of Manalo security guards. It's as close as we're going to get. Uh, you can go yeah. or we'll contact the heat. That's, that's perfectly because fine. Because you guys do not have the right to film that. Yeah. We are doing a piece on INC that will look at allegations of financial corruption, kidnapping, okay, you're not doing it and murder. So if, if we have to leave, we will leave. Okay, you need to leave. You're right. But when we get back to our rented SUV, someone's left us a message. From the beginning of the day, they followed us, they harassed us, they did everything they could to keep us from doing our jobs. Fair enough, it's all in a day's work. But then we got back to our vehicle afterwards. All of our tires were slashed. You can see where the 
the knife went in here. Look at this one. This one's totally deflated because it's been slashed. <laughs> Do we know for a fact who did this? Did we see who did this? No. Do we have a pretty good idea? We do. Our INC minder isn't far away. We ask him. I have no idea. Coincidence? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm a journalist. I don't believe in coincidences. Well, it happens. It does happen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would imagine it happens occasionally yeah. well, with sad. those who cross INC. I am sad. I am sad that uh, that's what happened. Weeks later, we get a letter from the lawyers for INC calling the allegations from our investigation scandalous, outrageous, and untrue. Good morning. Hi, Mama. How are you? Back in Vancouver, Lowell Menorca still considers INC a serious threat. I want to hug. I want to hug. His mother, recovering from a stroke, also fled here from the Philippines, fearing she's in danger from INC because of her son's efforts to expose them. The church denies that. Pray first. Okay. Po namin Salamat po ng Today, the Immigration and Refugee Board will decide whether she too can stay in Canada. I fear that she won't survive if ever she'll be sent back to the Philippines. At day's end, the hearing is over, and Lul Menorca is smiling. The Refugee Board has given protection to his mom as well. It went great. It went great. Uh, prayers answered. I'm just so happy and relieved that my mom will finally be safe here in Canada. And I can't explain how happy I am. His mother is safe, but his wife and kids are still in hiding in Asia. Hi. Good morning. Hi, Ichi. Hi. Wow, that's a hat. Wow. Lowell is in touch by Skype, but he hasn't physically been with them in almost three years, and he's never even held his now two-year-old son. Oh, whoa! Whoa! I miss you, Michiichi. Looking back, two years ago, leaving my family was the hardest thing for me to do. But I know back then that's the only way I can keep them alive. If I stay away from them. Once he couldn't imagine being without Iglesia Ni Cristo, his lifelong church. Now he says he's learned that INC and God are two very different things. 